Hey guys, Sir Shot Major here. I'm going to be doing a review on the PNW Air Dynamics MOSFET. Now, they call this the Hulk FET, so that's just what I'm going to refer to it as. Now, I get these off of a guy on Facebook, so I am not 100% sure, but I think he buys the parts from Air Dynamics. I think it's a company, and they buy, this guy buys parts from them, and then he actually assembles the MOSFETs. And I'm not sure if they actually buy MOSFETs from him and sell them on their website. I don't know how that works for sure, but I've always bought them from him, and he has said that he's assembled them. So I'm not sure um, how they're working that deal out. I'm not 100% on that. Now, I have installed um, eight of these total, including the Gen 1s. Um, I got... The Gen 1s were absolute garbage. Um, I got... Was it four of them? I think it was three of them. I think it was... No... I think it was four. Honestly, I think it was four. Yeah, I think I got four. Me and James split it. You know, I think we each had got two or whatever. Um, and obviously, I was going to install them for him. But basically, I installed, I believe it was three of them into one gun, James' gun, and they all fried under 100 cycles. So, it took me a few months, um, probably like three months, to get my money back. I didn't actually get my money back. I got... The Gen 2 MOSFETs instead. I got replacements. Um, now the replacements ended up being very, very good. So in the end, it was totally fine. But it was very, very annoying to have to wait three months um, for resolution. So I'm not going to get into that. That was just... Uh, but the guy has worked with me. And uh, we've come to agreements and uh, stuff like that. So uh, I love the MOSFET though. The MOSFET is really nicely made. The Gen 2s. Um, now I think he might even have a Gen 3... Um, he's changed the colors of the wires, so I'm not sure what gen, if he's considered changing the wire colors, changing a gen. I'm not sure what he's considered them. So, these are the ones that are available. If you buy one, they're going to be the newer ones, the, the ones that are good. The gen ones were straight trash. Um, the new ones have, um, protection. So, basically, it's just heat protection. Um, so they're much, much, much stronger than the original ones. Now there's the newer ones. This is like the Gen 2. I, I Gen 2. Um, the Gen 3 is a little bit neater. The MOSFET board is wrapped a little bit neater. But honestly they're both good. This looks like a uh, um, not what's that piece of candy. Um, the type of candy that's like wrapped. Um, uh, uh, I think it starts with a T. It's not Twix. It's a uh, I forget. It's it's wrapped like this. It reminds me of a piece of candy that's wrapped. Um, and, you know, it's it looks kind of rough, but this thing doesn't heat up at all. And that is very, very important with the MOSFET. If it doesn't heat up, then chances are it's not going to fry. Because when they heat up, they fry. Okay? So, this heats up none. And I use, I've tried 11-1 LiPos, and it runs 100%. Now, I have this in my ACR. This is the only personal uh, Hulk Fit that I have right now. I'm building an AUG, so I don't think I've told any of you guys I got an AUG for really cheap, and I'm using one of these MOSFETs for it, because I actually ended up cutting one too short for this gun. It was, it came out like right here, the board was right here, it was too short. I couldn't fit this barrel uh, trunnion in here, the receiver, receiver um, base, I guess you could call it. Um, I couldn't fit that in there because I cut it too short, so I ended up recutting it. That's what's in here now, but the old one fit in an all gear box, or on the outside of an all gear box, that is, um, because the MOSFET board is going to be on the inside of the receiver, so you're not going to even see it. So there's a little plate on the back of the all inside the stock. You're just going to see the Deans pop out. The MOSFET board is going to be on the inside. Um, most likely, that's how I'm going to try to wire it, but worst case, the board is sticking out or chip and the Deans, which is no big deal to me. In fact, I, I might prefer that. But if the MOSFET uh, chip is on the inside of that stock, then I have a little bit more space for battery uh, storage. So, you know, I've already got a battery ordered for that AUG, so I know the battery that I ordered is going to fit. Um, because I have one very similar to it. It's just really bloated and it's kind of poopy. So I just ordered basically an identical battery for that gun. But stay tuned. Um, probably by the end of the week I might have a video on that gun. Depends on how smooth it goes. I'm waiting on one part. It's just a motor. Everything else is good to go. So, but I haven't tested the range accuracy and FPS yet. So I might run into issues there. I might not. I threw some upgrades into it so it's not stock. But on to the MOSFET. So when you get the MOSFET, um, it's going to come in a sealed bag. 
kind of sealed, not really sealed actually. Um, it's like a Ziploc, so it's not like it's never been opened before, you know what I mean? Like air sealed. Um, but it's a reusable bag. I have plenty of them because I've gotten a bunch of these MOSFETs. It's really nice that it comes in a bag like that. Um, it's just very professional. Now on the inside of the non-drop ins, you're going to get three motor tabs. You're going to get, I believe, six pieces of heat shrink, which is more than enough. Every time I wire one of these in, I have two to four pieces of heat shrink extra, which is perfect because extra heat shrink is just good. Because when I go to wire guns to um, Deans or wire batteries to Deans, I'm going to need heat shrink. Or when I go to rewire a gun with just standard wiring, um, I have to have heat shrink for that too. So it's always good to have spares, so I love that they give you spares. The same, same thing with the motor tabs. They give you three, and you only need two. And a lot of times I only use one because I end up using the existing uh, red wire that goes from the trigger contacts to the motor. Normally I use the existing one, unless it's damaged. Or there's no wires at all on the existing trigger contacts. If there's none, you know, I'll have to... Uh, use one of the wires that come with the MOSFET. Now, as far as the wires that come with the MOSFET, um, the, it gives you plenty of wires. I've never struggled on fitting them inside of a gun. I've installed one front wire to this ACR, and it fits perfectly. And ACRs are arguably one of the worst guns to put a MOSFET in because you have to take apart the whole receiver. This whole body has to be taken apart, at least the way I do it. You have to pull this whole thing apart and pull all the screws out. Um, so that has been quite annoying, but... I fit in here and there's no reason to open it up um, and I have a quick change spring guide in this specific ACR so I can change FPS if I really want to. Although I am running this low stress, I, low stress, I will say that the AUG I'm going to be putting together that I'm almost done with is going to be higher stress. Now it's going to be semi-auto locked and I'm trying to get it to shoot about 450. So it's going to be a higher stress. So we'll see how the MOSFET puts up with it. That's going to be the highest stress gun I put one of these MOSFETs in. Um, but I'm sure it'll hand, ele, handle it. 11-1 pulling an M130, and obviously it's short-stroked a little bit. Um, the, the MOSFET should put up with it on the AC, on the uh, AUG. On this gun, I'm running an M100 full-stroke. Um, I believe it's full-stroke. It's running at about 310 FPS with a point two. Um, the gearbox seal is not perfect, but honestly, I'm not a huge FPS person. Plus, this is probably my lender if somebody wants to use a gun one of my friends and they don't have a gun or they just want to use one of my guns this is most likely the gun I'll throw their way because it's the most stock gun that I have okay so internally I just want to mention what I'm running I have an Ares Amoeba motor this is the ones that come in the Amoebas not the Elite Force OEM Ares M4 so it's a little bit higher quality it's higher torque um, we have an SHS 13-1 gear set we have a sector chip on there a ZCI M100 spring QD gearbox shell which is nice um, we have Sorbo in there, a Elite Force red metal rack piston. Um, I think it's the Elite Force piston head as well. The Hulk Fet. Um, and I think that's all that really matters. I don't think I'm missing anything. Just stock cylinder set, nozzle, G&G bucking, stock hop up, stock barrel. If I threw a barrel in here like a 601, I'd probably get like 340 and that would be nice. Um, but I'm just using the stock barrel. I might upgrade the inner barrel later on to get the more FPS out of it without upping the spring. So we're just going to shoot this real quick. Now, I actually use a 7.4 in this gun. Now, you probably call me stupid. Now, I, I understand, and I don't recommend using a MOSFET with a 7.4 because a 7.4 LiPo is not going to burn your stock trigger contacts out. They're just not. I have a friend that's been running SHS trigger contacts in his M4, his CQBR, for about a year. He doesn't use it all that much. But I took it apart last week, and there's nowhere on his trigger contacts at all. And his is a 25 to 35 C, 2200 milliamp. Um, and it's got upgraded gears, upgraded motors, so it's drawing more power. And it's just that gun cycles very, very nicely. Now, this one is a 40 to 50 C, so it's a higher discharge, um, and then an 1800 milliamp. So this thing will last me all day. Um, I obviously wired it to Dean's because these don't come with Dean's. Um, and it's a perfect battery for this gun. Um, you can't fit... 11-1 brick lipos in here at least ones that I have used um, I haven't been able to fit one in here So 7-4 is perfect for this gun I will test it with an 11-1 just so you get an idea and there's no heat with either I wouldn't go above an 11.1 um, I guess you could pop a 14-8 a in here and use it until it breaks till the MOSFET breaks But honestly, I wouldn't now. I do want to mention quality control. I've had um, Dang how many of these have I had I think I've had six 
six gen, the new gen ones, and I had one that was broken. Uh, it wasn't broken. It heated up like crazy, and that was the one I was going to put in Tice's, and um, the guy was going to have me send it back to him, and I told him I don't want to send it back to you. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm building guns for people every week. Uh, during the week, I'm building multiple guns. In fact, I have two people sending me their guns this week. Um, I'll probably, have to probably get them during the week next week. I'm building my AUG. Um, I'm finishing my sniper. Um, I opened my friend's CQBR just to make sure everything was running in it. Um, I spent three hours two nights ago rebuilding my friend's externals on his gun, and his gun looks nice now. So I'm very busy. I do a lot of this type of stuff. So I could, didn't have, I don't have really have time to run in the mail, uh, the post office, and send the package out when I purchased it, and as soon as I got it, it was a fail. So basically, he, we worked it out, um, I took the MOSFET apart, I actually cut it open, um, and then I heated it up so I could pull the heat shrink off, or I don't know what you call this, it's the uh, coating I guess you could say, and then it was missing a piece of heat shrink on there. So when he assembled it, he didn't put a piece of heat shrink, so it was like shorting and heating up a lot. Um, under like, I'd say you fire it three times and it was hot, too hot to hold. Um, so it was that bad, so he ended up just saying, oh sorry, um, so I, you know, he, uh, he ended up just, he's going to send me a new MOSFET without making me send the old one in because I didn't do anything to break it. I shouldn't have to go spend my money to ship it to you in my time. But he, we worked it out. He, uh, he's a great guy, so um, we worked that out. So he, you can work with him. Um, I mean, I don't know if he's going to change his policy, but I'm sure with some people who have you send the MOSFET back, if you're new to Airsoft and you don't know how to install it, you could have possibly installed it wrong or fried something or something along those lines so or you don't know how to um take the coating off so you can send a video or picture to him to show him if he assembled it wrong or something was up on the inside like a wire came loose or whatever um he might have you send it in so yeah um sorry for the ranting uh, but if you do want to see other mosfets let me know i really don't want to make a video how to install one there's plenty of other videos out there on how to install one but if you want me to review my nuke vet and my MP5, just let me know, I'll review that. And then I have already done reviews on the Chimera and the Spectre BTC. Um, the only other MOSFET I have that I don't have a video on is the NukeFet. So if you want to see a video on that, just say, can I see a video on the NukeFet? And I'll make one and post it on my YouTube. So this is a 7.4. This is what I've run. Again, dry firing. Trigger response is actually pretty good. It's okay. Rip full auto. It shoots 20 rounds a second with ammo in there with this battery, um, which isn't bad. Um, it's very efficient. The motor barely heats up. Um, even in game, like, you know, shooting a lot of rounds indoors, that's when I can kind of feel some heat. But there's no heat in the MOSFET, no battery heat. So, and it's normal for motors to heat up too, especially with a 40 to 50 C. So then we're going to go to an 11.1, and this is really where it kicks up. You can tell the performance of this specific gun. Um, and the MOSFET. Semi-automatic doesn't seem to pick up too much. This is only a 15-25C 11-1. These are what I use in my ICS M4 um, and my Amoeba. But it really kicks up in rate of fire. Okay, so that's roughly 27 with an 11-1, which is a pretty big jump. Um, it really is. And there's no MOSFET heat whatsoever. Um, and that was within 11.1 too. So it's ready to go. Good quality MOSFET. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know. I know there was, I think AST Kilo was the 2.3 uh, or whatever. He did a video on this. And um, I was going to do one anyways. But I just wanted to wait. And it's actually pretty encouraging to see that other people, other airsofters are getting these MOSFETs. And doing reviews on them too. Not just my idea. So it's nice that... Uh, then I'm not alone in this, you know what I mean? He was the uh, real OG, though, because he uploaded it first. Uh, but yeah, that is the uh, PNW Air Dynamics Hulk Fet. If you have any questions about it, let me know, but it's a standard MOSFET, no active braking. You can get it in Dean's or Tamiya. Obviously, you have to cut the wires to install it. And if anybody would want me to install this in your gun, I don't charge that much money. I do between $20 and $40. Plus, if you ship it to me, you pay for both shipping. So normally that's what I do. And sometimes your guns will be featured on my channel. Um, if it's a higher like rate of fire or just a nicer build internally and externally, 
the more likely it's going to be featured on my channel. So I have a VFC M16 just like the one that my brother got uh, coming to me to build. So I will have a video on that. It's going to be a really nice build. It's going to be a DMR running like right at 400 FPS. So, um, so stay tuned for that. That should be done in about two weeks from when this video is uploaded. I should have that. And the AUG should be uploaded honestly at the end of the week. So like January 10th or so. Um, actually before that, January 7th, I should be around there. I should be able to upload the video. So just uh, stay tuned and I will see you guys later.